Right now, Qatari officials are working to repair another truce between Israel and Hamas after a week-long pause in fighting. Israel says more than 130 hostages still remain captive in Gaza at this hour. And just moments ago, uh, we just got word from the IDF. Um, the IDF has announced the death of a fifth hostage now, a 75-year-old man from kibbutz near Oz. Let's bring in Mark Regev, senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former Israeli ambassador to the UK. Ambassador, welcome to you. And um, I'm sorry for leading into you with that horrific news. Um, first, your reaction to that. So it's clear that Hamas is, 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 is brutal and that we are extremely worried about how they're treating the hostages that have remained behind. We're thankful that we got 81 Israelis out, 81 Israelis who were in Hamas's dungeons. They are out. Unfortunately, as you said just now, there's, there's more than 130 still left behind, and that's a problem. We've been hearing stories from the medical teams that have been dealing with the hostages that come out, and, and they are saying that the hostages uh, went through a, a very difficult time, the ones that are now out and can talk. Abuse after abuse after abuse. Children suffered abuse at Hamas's hands. But maybe we shouldn't be surprised. We saw the way Hamas behaved when they invaded Israel on October 7th, when they butchered our people, when they burned families alive, when they machine gunned the young people at the, at the open air music concert, uh, concert. We know what we're dealing with. Hamas are brutal killers. We can have no illusions. Ambassador, just reading through the update from the IDF spokesperson here about this now fifth hostage pronounced dead, um, this through the IDF, uh, the name of that hostage, we are told, uh, Eliyahu Margalit, 75 years old um, from Kibbutz near Oz. Um, Eliyahu's daughter, we are told in this update, uh, was Neely Margalit who was released last night. Um, to clarify, and reading directly from the note coming from the IDF here, the bodies of these five people, these hostages, are still being held right now by Hamas in Gaza. Um, they're still being counted in the total number of 136 hostages. We believe that to be the case, at least. Uh, we're waiting for an exact response from the IDF on that. Uh, what can you tell us about the negotiations now that this week-long ceasefire is over? Why did they fall apart? Well, Hamas took a decision that they didn't want to honor the, uh, the understandings that were reached. And as you know, the United States played a key role in, in, in reaching those understandings. Uh, and uh, Hamas was supposed to release hostages and, and for releasing hostages, more hostages, where we were willing to extend the humanitarian pause. But uh, for its own reasons, Hamas uh, not only didn't um, uh, follow through on its commitments about hostages, but Hamas also opened fire. And this morning at about 5.30 a.m. local time, there was uh, rockets being fired from Gaza into Israel. Uh, and so they broke the quiet by attacking us. And, and, and at, the, at the same time, they weren't following through on their commitments under the understandings. And so uh, they... They, they jettisoned uh, the pause, and if the people of Gaza are now uh, in, once again, in a war zone, they have no one to look to except for, except for Hamas, who has deliberately, uh, in a premeditated action, uh, uh, started the war once again. Just reading through some updates from the White House's John Kirby, um, who is speaking right now to this, um, answering that very question, Ambassador. Uh, why the negotiations fell apart. His response is because Hamas, because of Hamas, that this pause has ended. Um, some other things that he's saying right now, and I'll get reaction for it from you as I read these. It's more than plausible, Kirby says, that Hamas has more women and children hostages who could qualify for an exchange. Um, he also says in these remarks, Gaza must remain Palestinian land and cannot be reduced. I'll get your thoughts on both of those items as they're just now coming across the wire, Ambassador. So we agree. Uh, um, we believe there are more women and children that Hamas could have, uh, 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 could have uh, returned. 
and we agree that Israel doesn't want to, to, to occupy or rule Gaza. And we're only in this war to protect our people. We're only in this war to, to create a, a situation where Israelis who live on, on the southern frontier no longer have to live in fear of, of terrorist murderers crossing the border in the middle of the night and butchering their children. We're only in this because Hamas says that given the capability and given the opportunity, they would do the October 7th massacre again and again and again. Their words are not, not mine. So our action is defensive. And the goal is, and it's shared with the United States, we have to create a new reality in Gaza where that, that territory is no longer ruled uh, by, a, by a terrorist group. And our model is what the United States did when you led that coalition to destroy ISIS in Syria and Iraq. ISIS had what they called their caliphate. They controlled territory where they, they could inflict uh, pain on others from that territory. So just as ISIS uh, was destroyed in, in Syria and Iraq, we will destroy Hamas in Gaza. Ambassador, we appreciate your time today. Mark Ragev, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.